Hello everyone, today we will be discussing the functional matrix theory. The functional matrix theory of the Melvin Moss it is given in 1932. This was developed after the sutural theory of the seeker and the cartilaginous growth theory of the Scott were severely criticized for their inadequacy. It was actually the original concept of the functional uh, cranial component by the vendor clause. Now, what we really need is uh, we need to understand is we have in the functional ma in the functional uh, matrix concept we have the functional cranial component is divided into the functional matrix and the skeletal unit. So first learn about what the skeletal unit tells. Here it tells that all the skeletal tissue associated with a single function are called the skeletal unit. The, uh, the skeletal unit may be comp uh, comprised of the bone, cartilage and the tendinous tissue. When a bone is comprised of the several contiguous skeletal unit, they are termed as the microskeletal unit. They are so the maxilla and the mandible is the example of the microskeletal unit. Now, when the adjoining portions of the number of the neighboring bones are united to function uh, as a single cranial component, we term it as a macroskeletal unit. The entire endocranial surface of the calvarium is the example of the macroskeletal unit. Now, functional the functional matrix. Now, this is divided into the periosteal and the capsular matrix. Periosteal matrix, it acts directly, whereas the capsular matrix, they act indirectly. So, let's learn first this. This acts directly and actively upon the, uh, the related skeletal units by they, uh, how, what does they do? They produce a secondary compensatory transformation of the size and the shape of the skeletal units. Uh, such transformation are brought by the interrelated process of the bone uh, deposition and resorption. The periosteal matrix includes the muscle. This matrix includes the muscle, bones, vessel, nerve, glands, etc. So this much is important. Now, the capsular matrix. The capsular matrix acts indirectly and passively on the related skeletal units, producing a secondary compensatory translation in the space. Here, it acts directly and produces the transformation. Right? But, uh, transformation was here. But here, we, it acts indirectly and causes the translation. These alternation in the spatial position of the skeletal unit are brought about by the expansion of the orofacial capsule. Now, let's learn about what are these capsules actually. The ca it consists of the neurocranial capsule and the orofacial capsule. These are the examples of the uh, capsular matrix. So, uh, what we should learn is that it acts indirectly and by the uh, compensatory translation in the space and the uh, capsular neurocranial capsule and the orocranial capsule. The nasocranial capsule surrounds and protects the neurocranial capsular functional matrix which is uh, simply the brain, leptomeninges and the CSF. The neurocranial capsule is made up of skin connective tissue, um, aponeurotic layer, loose connective tissue layer and the periosteum along with the base of the skull and two layers of the dura mater. Now first was the as the first was the neurocranial capsule and the next is the orofacial capsule which surrounds and protects the oronasopharyngeal spaces that constitutes the orofacial capsular matrix. Now the growth of this facial skull is influenced by the volume and the patency of the 